You may have seen this image. Four Indian Air Force officers confirmed to be a part of the trained crew mission to be launched from India into the space. After much secrecy for years, the names were finally revealed. Greeted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the Gaganyaan mission were astronauts designate Group Captain Prashant Balakrishnan, Group Captain Ajit Krishnan, Group Captain Angad Pratap, Wing Commander Subhanshu Shukla. So this is ahead of India's Gaganyaan mission. Gagan, space, sky. Yaan refers to the vehicle that will take our crew into the space. But why is this Gaganyaan mission, a crew mission, such a big deal? What will it change for India? Yes, other countries have sent men to space, even to the moon, and decades ago. I agree. But look at India and compare it to the United States of America or Russia. We are still a new nation compared to the established powers and yet making this big mark. To become a member of the human space exploration, it's a domain traditionally dominated by at least two big powers, United States of America and Russia, and then also followed by China now. This Gaganyaan mission can become our ticket to the stars, literally and metaphorically, and a position in global standing. We've already entered into that space with the successful Chandrayaan moon mission, Mangalyaan Mars mission and Aditya L1 orbit around the Sun mission and also launching the PSLV satellites. India prepares to now become the fourth nation to send astronauts into space. India has invested heavily in this human space flight program. How much have we invested? In 2019, when the cabinet approved the initiative, it was about 9,023 crore rupees or approximately $1.2 billion that was promised as an estimate. By 2024, definitely this expenditure would have crossed 10,000 crore rupees because the Gaganyaan mission is indigenous, which means engines to rocket to crew capsule to life system all being made in India. The cost of technology development, flight hardware realization and essential infrastructure elements are needed and from the scratch. So according to experts in the field, as more R&D, research development is done, the amount needed will increase too. So how much money have other countries invested into their manned space missions? United States of America's first manned mission to the moon was called Apollo 11 mission. It was announced under President John F. Kennedy's government in 1961. And by 1969, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon for the first time, creating history. Now, as per the Planetary Society's detailed analysis, between 1960 and 1973, the United States of America spent a total of about $25.8 billion. This amount, when you adjust according to the dollar as of 2020 at least, comes to a staggering $257 billion. $257 billion for the manned space mission. Let's come to Russia, which was in the 1960s, USSR. USSR was the first country to reach the moon. Yes, that is correct. Even though, yes, USA put a man on the moon, it was USSR Vostok 1 mission, a one-man crew mission in 1961. That was the first entry into outer space, like we are attempting today. Robotic mission Luna 2 landed on the moon, we know, in 1959. So according to Statista, then the USSR during the 1960s, the decade, spent close to $30 billion in its space program. In today's time, that would be about $300 billion. And now the third big power, China, our neighbor, not the most friendly one, an expansionist mind and a competitor in terms of military economy and more. China sent the first man into space in 2003. The Shenzhou 5 spacecraft, launched on 15th October 2003, carried astronaut Yang Li Wei, who became the first Chinese ever to enter into space. But Shenzhou 5 mission in 2003 was estimated to be around $1 billion. So counting in inflation today, it comes to about $1.6 billion. So when we look at India's human space mission and the cost around it, the amount is not too high. There is a budget and there is efficiency. We already boast of a fairly low-cost success in especially the Chandrayaan and the Mangalyaan missions. And with successful Gaganyaan mission, fingers crossed, India may zoom into the spotlight of human space exploration too, all thanks to India's scientists who've been working very hard.
I must add here that other spacefaring, specifically the Western nations, have been very curious to know how is ISRO, our space research organization, that of a developing country with such a restricted budget, is managing these space achievements one after another. India is proving. You may not have all the money at present, but you have the ambition, the dreams and the determination. And with a smart strategy, you can succeed too, after all. Dr. Jitendra Singh, he's the Union Minister with Independent Charge of the Ministry of Science and Technology, said at an India Today conclave, India's space economy today stands at about $8 billion. But our own projection, he says, is that by 2040, it will multiply manifold. But he also adds, more interesting is that according to some international observers, for example, the recent ADL, Arthur D. Little report, mentions that we could have the potential of $100 billion by 2040. The minister also added that before the manned mission takes flight, there will be a test flight with a humanoid robot, Veomitra. Right now as we speak, behind the scenes, Despite the curveballs thrown by the pandemic or more, ISRO and DRDO are powering through with the impact studies on the crew module. Crafted by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the HAL, that will ferry our astronauts into space. While initial training skills were aced in Russian facilities and has been going on for the past five years at least, now intense training sessions toward the end are at the Human Space Flight Center in Bengaluru. Apart from technical skills, of course, are also fitness routines, art of yoga to ensure survival in space for the Indian astronauts. Remember this, Gaganyaan mission is not just about the launch vehicle Mark III, the orbital module or training the crew to head into space. It is also about ensuring to build an escape system route to ensure that our astronauts land safely back on Earth too. So as I conclude, what can you expect by 2025? Three out of four astronauts are expected to be sent into low Earth orbit of 400 kilometers altitude in a five-ton capsule for about three days and then a safe return to Earth by landing safely in India's sea waters. So mark your calendars because it's going to be a celestial fiesta, something like Indians have never seen before. ISRO's heavy lifter launcher LVM-3 that has been reconfigured for this mission. As we keep our fingers crossed, spare a thought for the astronauts and ISRO putting us on a global map or should I say putting us into the space exploration. Thank you for watching.